Hello, my name is Maria Miller from mathmanoff.com. In this video, I want to teach you how to teach long division to students, step by step. And this is the first part of it, there will be another video following this one. And as a prerequisite to learning long division, students need to be very familiar with the basic division facts and with the idea of a remainder and how to find remainders in basic division, such as 41 divided by 5, they need to be able to easily, easily solve it, that it's going to be 8, remainder 1. Oh here, 26 divided by 9, they need to be able to think 9 goes to 26 two times, and then there's a remainder 8. Okay? And then we can get started, little by little, advancing into the actual algorithm. I have specifically designed these steps so that the students will get familiar with everything in long division, little by little. In our first step, the division is even in every single digit, such as 462 divided by 2. We can divide 400 by 2 and get 200. And then 60 divided by 2 and get 3 here. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1, like that. In this step, students get familiar with this writing, how to write the long division in this long division corner, or how we want to call this symbol. And they will get used to the idea of dividing first the hundreds, then the tens, then the ones. Here we divide 6093 by 3. We can divide it first the thousands, then hundreds, then tens, then ones. 6000 divided by 3 equals 2, and so on. Another thing students can get familiar with at this stage is the thinking that we don't think 6 divided by 3, but instead we ask, how many times does 3 go to 6? Two times. How many times does 3 go to 0? Zero? 0 times. How many times does 3 go to 9? 3 times, and then 3 goes to 3 once. In the next step, we just add one little thing, one little difference, and that is that our divisor does not evenly go into the first digit, but will evenly go to the first two digits of the number. 3 doesn't go to 1, but 3 goes to 18. Okay. Imagine that there's a $100 bill, and there's 8 $10 bills, and then there's 6 $1 bills. You have this one $100 bill, and you cannot share it evenly between three people, right? You would have to rip it apart. You don't want to do that. So, you put zero here. Three does not go to one. You cannot divide the $100 bill by three. Instead, you will go to exchange it so that you get 10 $10 bills in its stead. And then you have 10 $10 bills and eight $10 bills, or a total of 18 $10 bills. I'm going to underline it. You are going to think of 18 $10 bills, and then you can divide evenly. Think 3 goes to 18, 6 times. And then lastly, we have the 6 $1 bills, and that goes evenly. 3 goes to 6, 2 times. Here, similarly, you would have 200, $200 bills, and 5 people sharing them. You cannot do that, so you put 0 here. Then you go exchange those $100 bills, to 20 $10 bills, and you already have 5 $10 bills, a total of 25 $10 bills. And now, think 5 goes to 25 5 times, or 25 $10 bills divided between 5 people, each person gets 5 $10 bills. It goes in the tenth place, and then 5 goes to 5 one time. In the next step, we have a similar situation, except the division is not even in the ones digit. We will have a remainder. Let's look at it. First of all, 2 would go to 4 two times, or we have 400 divided by 2, and we get 200. In the tens, it is even. 6 tens divided by 2 is 3, or think 2 goes to 6 three times. And then lastly, 2 goes to 5, not evenly, but 2 goes to 5, 2 times, right? And there is a remainder of 1. There's 1 left over, and I can write it here. 
My answer therefore is 232 remainder 1. Or if I have 499 divided by 7, here is a situation where 7 does not go to 4 any times. But I will combine this 400 with the 9 tenths and get 49 tenths. And 7 goes to 49 7 times. That's going to be 7 tenths here. Then 7 goes to 9 just once and there's a remainder 2. And I'll write the remainder here. We get 71 remainder 2. Students are used to writing the remainder right after the answer. So we'll let them write it here in this step. But in the next step, we will then learn to find the remainder by subtracting. First of all, we have a situation where 6 doesn't go to 3 many times. But then we combine the 300s and 0 tens to make 30 tens. Just like I was talking earlier, where you have $300 bills and you go exchange them for $10 bills. And now you would have 30 $10 bills. So 6 goes to 30 five times. And then 6 goes to 8 once. Right? But now, instead of writing the remainder here, remainder 2, we will multiply and subtract to find the remainder, like this. 1 times 6 is 6. Write 6 here. And subtract 8 minus 6 equals 2. And this is the remainder, and we will leave it there. Okay? So in this step, all students are doing is practicing finding the remainder by this method of multiply and subtract. And the remainder is only in the ones. It is not in the tens or hundreds, so that students can understand it better. Here, 4 does not go to 3. But I will combine my 3000s with the 200s, and get 32 hundreds. And 4 goes to 32 8 times. Now I can divide evenly. 4 goes to 4 once, the tens went evenly. And then in the ones, it's not an even division. 4 goes to 9 2 times. Now I subtract 2 times 4 is 8, and subtract to find my remainder, remainder 1. And after students have mastered all this up to this point, now we will finally come to the actual long division algorithm starting with two digit numbers first. Now they will see the algorithm in its fullness where we will have a remainder in the tenths too. Okay? So here, 3 does not go evenly to 7 but it does go to 7 so I'm not going to put 0 here. 3 goes to 7 2 times. Okay? Imagine that you have 7 $10 bills and three people sharing them. So each person would get two $10 bills, but then you will have one $10 bill left over, right? That you could not divide. So that's what you're gonna go exchange into $1 bills. And first of all, here we will multiply and subtract to find the remainder. Two times three is six. And then we subtract seven minus six. And here's our remainder 10. 1 10, that is a remainder. It is in the tens column, okay? And this is my one $10 bill that couldn't be shared evenly, so I go exchange it into 10 $1 bills. And so I have 10 $1 bills, and here's two $1 bills. So I'm going to combine these two, right? To get 12. And this is called dropping down the digit, right? This 2 is dropped down here. What it means is we just add the 2 to the 10, so that we have 12 here. Now we continue our division with the 12. 3 goes to 12 evenly, 4 times. And now we're basically done, because we are done with the last digit from here, and it went evenly. But it is customary to multiply this step. 4 times 3 equals 12 and subtract 12 minus 12 to get 0, 0 as our remainder. Another example, 5 goes to 6, one time, one here. 1 times 5, multiply, write it here, and then subtract 6 minus 5 is 1. And what this step has meant is that you have 6 $10 bills. 5 people are sharing them evenly, so each person gets one $10 bill. And then we multiply 1 times 5 is 5 and subtract to find that, okay, we're going to have one $10 bill left over that we could not divide. 
And now somebody goes and exchanges that to 10 one dollar bills. And then we will combine that with those five one dollar bills. We will add them. The 10 and 5 are added. It looks like I dropped down the digit, okay? So I have 15 one dollar bills and I divide now them between five people and I get three. Or five goes to 15 three times. And now it is customary, even though it is actually with the all down basically, it's customary to go three times five, 15, and subtract to make sure our remainder is zero. And one last example. Six goes to nine one time. And then one times six, we multiply and subtract. We get three tens here. And the three tens are combined with the zero ones, which, okay, we have now 30 ones. And six goes to 30 five times. Evenly, five times six is 30, and subtract to find your remainder, zero. In these examples, the same exact thing happens, except there's going to be a remainder here in the ones. It's not totally even. We just do four goes to seven one time. One times four is four. Then subtract to find the remainder in the tens. Three tens are the remainder here, and we add the five ones to it. And now we think 4 goes to 35 8 times. 8 times 4, 32. And subtract, and 3 is our remainder. The answer is 18, remainder 3. And here, 3 goes to 5 one time. 1 times 3, we multiply. Then we subtract. We have 2 tens as a remainder here. We combine that with the 8 ones to get 28 ones. 3 goes to 28, 9 times, 9 times 3 is 27, I'm sorry, 27, and subtract to find the remainder of 1. Okay, in my next video we will go on with this topic to more complex situations of long division, with 3 digits, 4 digits, and with money.